29-year-old male had lung trauma on his left eye. He developed a traumatic cataract and underwent phacomulsification in 2009. After five years, he presented a giant retinal tear and retinal detachment. For its management, we decided to perform a scleral buckling with pars plana vitrectomy. We could see the giant retinal tear and the associated retinal detachment as we continue with the vitrectomy. The perfluorocarbon heavy liquids slowly unrolled and flattened the retina as it filled the eye. This allowed us to observe the anterior edge of the retinal. An air fluid exchange was performed as we tried to reattach the anterior retina. In this part of the surgery, something happened. A subretinal hemorrhage occurred. But we managed to control it and successfully remove all the clots. After this, we realized the presence of perfluorocarbon heavy liquids on the retina, so we drained them. Another air fluid exchange was performed and laser was delivered through an endoprobe. Finally, silicone oil was infused for a long-acting tampon. In the follow-up, an elevation in macular area and another in the nasal region were detected. As we suspected, optical coherence tomography revealed a tephobial perfluorocarbon droplet. We decided to perform a pars plana vitrectomy revision. With this, we got a clear view of the subfobial perfluorocarbon droplet. We used a 42 gauge needle to make a small hole in the area surrounding the droplet to attempt its removal. We also used a cannula to help us mobilize the heavy liquid so it could be drained. After several attempts, we achieved the mobilization of the perfluorocarbon droplet and successfully achieved the complete removal of the droplet. After this, we approached the second perfluorocarbon droplet localized in the nasal area of the retina. And again, using the 42 gauge needle, we managed to achieve the complete drainage of it. Finally, we used gas for temporary tamponade and complete macular attachment was achieved. In the postoperative exam, the final visual acuity of our patient was 2400. We performed an optical coherence tomography that showed the complete removal of the droplet, but instead the presence of a macular hole was detected, explaining the visual acuity.